Good morning, students. In today's class, I am going to finish off the prose entitled "The Grammar of Anarchy" by B. R. Ambedkar. So, let me go through the paragraphs, remaining paragraphs of this prose. Look at here. It is not that India did not know what democracy. There, what is democracy? In the last class itself, already I discussed what is democracy. A a form of government where people have the authority to choose their governing body. So that is called as democracy. There was a time when India was stunted with republics, and even where there were monarchies, there were. either elected or limited they were never absolute it is not that india did not know parliaments or parliamentary procedure okay look at here it is not that india did not know parliament or parliamentary procedures yes a study of the buddhist bhikshu sanghas discloses that not only were the they uh, not only were their parliaments for the sanghas were nothing but parliaments look at here buddhist bhikshu sanghas discloses what they disclosed that were the parliaments sanghas actually sanghas what are the their sanghas actually they compared with parliament yes so they they knew this parliamentary rules look at here but the sanghas knew and observed all the rules of parliamentary procedure known to modern times although these rules of parliamentary procedures were applied by the buddha to the meetings of sanghas they applied these parliamentary procedures rules and regulation to this to their sanghas so meetings of the sanghas he must have borrowed them from the rules of the political assemblies functioning in the country in his time so he must have borrowed this parliamentary rules the parliamentary rules from this sanghas of buddha okay now coming to the next paragraph this democratic system india lost yes initially indians lost this democratic system will she will she lose it a second time ambedkar just he is delivering he was delivering the speech that now it's a, now it's a second time will she lose it a second time i don't know but it's quite possible in a country like india where democracy from its long disuse must be regarded as something quite new democracy from its long disuse so they are not using this long disuse must be regarded as something quite new now because right now india they are not following india is right now india was not democratic country so when ambedkar was delivering the speech at that time india was not democratic country so ambedkar was delivering uh, he was saying that whatever the democracy the second time india will she lose it a second time so he was saying that it's something new for india whatever this democracy this democratic system is something new for india quite new there is a danger of democracy giving place to dictatorship it is quite possible for this new born democracy to retain its form but give place to dictatorship in fact so 
so he was saying that okay if india gets democracy if india gets democracy it's something new to them so everyone whatever the indian should follow the correct democratic rules if not so what is the danger danger of democracy giving place to dictatorship what is that cruel cruel person or a cruel hero yes he thinks that no need for public opinion okay dictatorship so cruel king or cruel hero somebody who is ruling the country or state something so he he has cruel mentality he don't want he don't need public opinion he suppresses the media so that is called as dictat dictatorship so if india if india if it does not follow the democratic rules and regulations then india is going to be in danger yes giving place to dictatorship it is quite possible for this new born democracy now it's a democracy it's a new born to india it's it's newly it's new thing to us so democracy is new democratic system is new system to us so here ambedkar just he was saying that this new born democracy to retain to maintain its form but give place to dictatorship in fact if there is a landslide the danger of the second possibility becoming actuality in is much greater okay what he is saying that because of the political parties jealous or selfishness because of them if something happens to our politics something some clashes in the political parties or some because of the people selfish characters political parties selfish characters if something happens then india the second time so there is a possibility for india to face this dictatorship dictatorship type of democratic it's not dem- it is not going to be a dem- it is not going to follow democratic system just our india goes in, in into our india give place to dictatorship yes indians will give place to dictatorship so what he is saying that political parties everyone has to follow this democratic system rules and regulations look at here if we wish to maintain democracy not merely in form but also in fact what must we do so what what we want to do just ambedkar was saying the first thing in my judgment we must do it's to hold fast to constitutional methods we have to hold fast what are, what we what we need to hold constitutional methods of achieving our social and economic objectives we have to fulfill the, our social and economic objectives so it's our it's our duty to hold fast to constitutional methods we have to follow this constitutional methods it means we must abandon the bloody methods of revolution what are the uh, bloody methods of revolution so what are there here they had given civil disobedience non corporation and satyagraha when there was no way left for constitutional methods for achieving economic and social objectives there was a great deal of justification for unconstitutional methods but where constitutional methods are open there can be no justifications for the unconstitutional methods these methods are nothing but grammar of anarchy and the sooner they are abandoned the better for us so what he is saying that what is uh, what's the meaning of this grammar a set of rules on principle a, the grammar of anarchy so what is the anarchy in the last anarchy in the last session already i discussed the definition of this what is this here the society is being 
the society is going to be very yes it is going to be freely constituted without without authorities without authorities power okay absence of government so that is called as anarchy the second thing we must to do so what he was saying one second let me go back here what he is saying this what is his anarchy that is this anarchy is going to be abundant the grammar of anarchy sooner it they are abundant sooner it is going to be yes suppressed that is the meaning of here he was saying that these methods are nothing but the grammar of anarchy and the sooner they are abundant the better for us so that is better for us abundant of this grammar of anarchy so got it anarchy what is anarchy here the society yes it is free of what is that authorities powers and absence of government next coming to the second thing we must do do we must do is observe the caution which john stuart mill has given to all who are interested in the maintenance of democracy namely not to lay their liberties at the feet of even a great man or to trust him with power which enables him to subvert their institution there is nothing wrong in being grateful to great ma- men who have rendered lifelong service to the country so who had given yes who is uh, he nothing wrong in being re- grateful to great man yes who sacrificed his life for country but there are limits to gratefulness this caution is far more necessary in the case of india than in the case of another country for in india bhakti or what may be called the path of dev- devotion her hero worship plays a part in its politics and equaled in magnitude by the part it plays in the politics of any other country in the world so what he is saying that is okay worshiping the person yes uh, um, gr- thankful to the person and greeting uh, great men greeting great men yes really it's a good work to gre- yes thankful to such a great person it's really good but yes everything is good but in india see the people they are going to be yes they are going to dedicate yes whatever just hero worship they are going to develop a habit of hero worship okay praising the praising the great men okay it's okay but our he 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 was saying that here he was saying that our indians that they, they pray just they uh, uh, they are very thankful and they cross even they cross the what is the limitations so they they stop what are the limitation just they cross all the limitation and they start and they involve themselves in hero worship yes bhakti in religion may be a road to the salvation of the soul so actually bhakti in religion is very very good it's a gives salvation it develops salvation it go look at here may be a road to the salvation of the sound yes got it look at here but in politics bhakti or hero worship worship is a sure road to degradation of eventual dictatorship what he was saying he was conveying that is okay worshiping a great a great person treating him with a lots of respect yes it's everything is good it's compulsory it's our courtesy to uh, great uh, to be thankful to the great person but in india generally our indians okay in our religion bhakti which leads us to uh to be uh, to lead to salvation of the soul but in politics in our indian politics what is going to happen too much over over worshiping the person yes because as if, uh, as they are crossing this their limitations beyond their limit beyond them beyond the rules and regulations they are going to cross that limitations and simply blindly the worship 
a person. Blindly they worship a person. What is that? Hero worship. So which leads to dictatorship. Yes. Now. Look at here. The third thing we must do is not be content with mere political democracy. We must make our political democracy a social democracy as well. What he was saying that, yes, we Indians, we must make our political democracy as a social democracy. So, changing of political democracy to social democracy. Political democracy cannot last unless there, li uh, there lies at the base of its social democracy. What does social democracy mean? What is that? It means a way of life which recognizes liberty, equality, fraternity as the principles of life. So what are the slogans of our India? Indians? What is our constitutional slogans? Liberty, equality, fraternity. So we know what is liberty. So having freedom, equality. So having equality among all the men and women, religions, caste. Yes, what is fraternity having togetherness, common brotherhood feelings among the Indians. That is called fraternity. So what is mean by social democracy? Having such good qualities. They are the principles. These principles of liberty, equality and fraternity are not to be treated as separate items in Trinity. Try. What is this three? What is it? Trinity. What is try? Three. What are three? Liberty, equality, fraternity. So, so as we know, India is unity, unity in diversity. Indians, yes. They form a union of trinity or trinity. Try. What is try? Three. Trinity or trinity. In the sense that to diverse one from the other is to defeat the very purpose of democracy. Liberty cannot be diverse from equality. Equality cannot be diverse from liberty. Here he used the word diverse. What is the meaning of this diverse? Separation. So liberty cannot be separated from equality. Equality cannot be diverse from liberty. Yes. So all these three principles are yes. So they are linked up. Yes. Liberty cannot be diverse from equality and equality cannot be diverse from liberty. So interrelated. These things are interrelated. Nor can liberty and equality be diverse from fraternity. Without equality, liberty would produce the supremacy of the few over the many. So because without equality, liberty leads to domination power. Equality without liberty would kill individual initiatives. Without equality, without liberty, if of course now equality is there, we are following the equality principle without liberty principle, then which leads to which going to kill individual initiative. Without fraternity, liberty and equality could not become a na natural course of things. It would require a constable to enforce them. We must begin by acknowledging the fact that there is a complete absence of two things in Indian society. One of these is equality, one equality. On the social plane, we have in India a society based on the principles of greater inequality in which there are some who have immense wealth as against many who live in ab abject poverty. So here in India, there are so many rich people. So, so look at here. On the social plane, we have in, in we have in India a society based on the principle of greater inequality. Why? What's that? Because what? What is the reason for this inequality? Because rich and poor, rich and poverty. So he was saying that in India, people have people are with different mentalities because of what is that because of their status 
on the 26th, 6th January 1950, we are going to enter a life of contradictions. In politics, we will have equality and in social and economic life, we will have inequality. So, in politics, we will have equality and in social and economic life, we will have inequality. Yes, he was saying that. In politics, equality. But whereas in our social life and economic life, we will have inequality. In politics, we will be recognizing the principle of one man, one vote, one vote, one value. What's the principle? One man, one vote. One vote, one value. It's very, very important. What is that? One second. One man, one vote. And one vote, one value. In our social and economic life, we shall... By reason of our social and economic structure, continue to deny the principle of one man, one value. So, because of the economic differences between rich and poor, yes, because of that, so we are not going to follow, we are not going to accept, deny the principle of one man, one value. How long shall we continue to live this life of contradictions? Yes, contradictions, yes, contrary character, contrary versions because rich and poor, discrimination between them. How long shall we continue to deny equality in our social and economic life? He is questioning, he was questioning, yes, Ambedkar was questioning this. If we continue to deny it for long, we will do so only by putting out political democracy in peril. We must remove this contradiction at the earliest possible moment or else those who suffer from inequality will blow up the structure of political democracy which this assembly has so laboriously, laboriously built up. Yes, he was saying, yes, so we have to, so inequality, yes, inequality, gra greater inequality because discrimination between rich and poor, yes, we have to remove such, what is that inequality between among the people, yes. Now, Coming to the next paragraph. The second things we are wanting in, in is recognition of the principle of fraternity. What is that? Here equality. Yes, here he talked about equality. One man, one vote, one vote, one value. Now coming to fraternity. Fraternity means a sense of common brotherhood of all Indians. Of So it is what is that? Common brotherhood feelings. It is a principle which gives unity and so solidarity, solidarity to social life. It is difficult thing to achieve. I remember the days when politically minded Indians resented the expression, the people of India, they preferred the expression, the Indian nation. They preferred the expression, what is, they preferred? The Indian nation. I am of the opinion that in believing that we are a nation, we are cherishing a great delusion. Yes, we are a nation. This is important point. Yes, we are a nation. What's a nation? Is a group of people who share the same territory, history, culture. Yes, we are. We are a nation. Indian nation. It's very good. For then, only we shall realize the necessity of becoming a nation and seriously think of the ways and means of realizing the goal. The realization of this goal is going to be very difficult. As in India, there are caste. The caste are anti-national. So, in India, caste discrimination. In the first place, because they bring about separation in social life, there are anti-national also because they generate jealousy and antipathy between caste. What is the casteism? But we must overcome all these difficulties if we wish to become a nation in reality. We have to overcome all these difficulties. He is saying not to follow this casteism. There should not be no description among the caste for fraternity can look at here fraternity can be a fact only when there is a nation without fraternity equality and liberty will be no deeper than cost of 
कॉस्ट ऑफ पेड विदाउट फ्रेटर्निटी विदाउट इक्वालिटी विदाउट लिबरिटी लिबर्टी वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू अचीव दिस डेमोक्रेटिक इंडिया वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू यस वी आर इफ वी if we are able to follow these principles really india is not going to have what is the democratic india it is no longer called as democratic india it is going into what is just now here uh, i discussed what is that what is the danger danger of democracy giving place to dictatorship so we have to follow these principles then only india our india what is the what then only our indian system is going to call as democratic system okay now coming to the next hmm. but but there can be no gain saying that political power in this country has too long been the monopoly a monopoly of a few and monopoly of a few and the many are not only beast of burden look at our indian politics yes only one man show it's our politics but also beast of prey yes others are slaves just here the compared this monopoly has not merely deprived deprived them them of their chance of betterment it has 